Hi, I'm Jessica, Director of Product at Cerebra Systems. And today I'll be talking to you about software programmability on the CS2. Now the modern networks of today have gotten larger and more complex and therefore much slower to train. And to deal with this, what we've traditionally done is just bring together larger and larger clusters of small computing devices like GPUs. But what we've also seen in the data is that distributed training is not always the best option that for these larger neural networks, such as BERT in this example, you can scale from one to 512 devices and only see a difference in 68x speed up. So the speed up is clearly nonlinear when we use this regime and clusters of this size are also extremely difficult to set up and to program. So at Cerebris, we took a look at this problem and thought, if we're gonna go through all of this trouble to take these small chips and bring them back together again and deal with all of the issues around communication bottlenecks and synchronization overheads, why don't we just keep all that compute together to begin with? So this has been our primary innovation, the Cerebris wafer scale engine, and it is a single chip the size of a large dinner plate, and more importantly, the size of a full silicon wafer on which we've been able to pack 850,000 AI optimized cores and a huge amount of on-chip memory all connected via silicon so that there are no memory bandwidth bottlenecks, no fabric bandwidth bottlenecks. And from a programmability perspective, significantly more simplicity in how you program this chip. The Cerebrus wafer scale engine is what powers our flagship system, the Cerebrus CS2, which you can think about as cluster scale compute, but with the programming ease of a single system because all of this acceleration is delivered in a single node. Now to put some intuition behind this, if you think about a traditional large model that you're trying to train and you're using a GPU cluster, what you typically have to do is think about taking each layer of the neural network and considering how to partition up that large layer so that it will fit into the small on-chip memory of individual GPUs. Now, once you've done that model parallel layer sharding, if you then wanna to get to good speed ups, you have to think about how you take that block and then run those data parallel across an even larger number of GPUs. And all of this put together when you're dealing with hundreds and sometimes even thousands of GPUs becomes very complex in terms of having to mix model with data parallelism in order to get to the sizes and the speeds that you want. In comparison on the CS2, because we have such a large chip with so much on-chip memory, in the majority of cases, an entire neural network with all of its layers is able to simultaneously fit on-chip at the same time. And even for models which are extremely large, let's say of the size of GPT-2 or TNLG, when you get to the point where even on the CS2, you have to go layer by layer, we still have so much on-chip memory that you can fit an entire large layer on the system at the same time without having to do additional partitioning. And the 40 gigabytes of on-chip SRAM on the CS2 is large enough to fit single matrices up to 100,000 by 100,000 in size which is much larger even than used for the largest networks of today, like GPT-3. So this is why the CS2 is so much similar to program on a fundamental level. But getting into the specifics of how, programming the CS2 uses the same tools that you're already familiar with today. Our software platform, CSoft, integrates with deep learning frameworks such as TensorFlow and PyTorch all the way at the interface level. And what that means is that you don't have to do any manual graph extraction. You don't personally have to do any manual interaction with the CS2. After you've programmed your model in TensorFlow or PyTorch, our software compiler takes care of everything else that has to do with mapping your neural network to an optimized executable for the CS2. Now in TensorFlow, what this looks like is simply importing our wrapper class, the Cerebrus Estimator, which is based on the standard TensorFlow estimator, <clears throat> which is also what is used to run training and inference on TPUs today. Once you've imported this wrapper class, you can define your model function and your input function as usual, instantiate the estimator, and then simply call estimator.train instead of the more standard Keras model.fit. For the most part, these are the only changes you have to make to your code. 
And when you're actually launching a run to the CS2, you can use a standard orchestrator such as Slurm to get the job going. In PyTorch, it's similarly simple. For PyTorch, we have a custom class called Cerebrus Torch, which after importing, all you need to do is initialize CBTorch, load the model with the CBTorch module, wrap your typical PyTorch data loader in cbtorch.dataloader, and then finally, when you're defining your training loop, wrapping that in a cbtorch.session context. And once again, you can use PyTorch the way that you are traditionally used to and everything else is the same, so long as you import the class and wrap your training loop in the session. So now that we've talked about how you change your code, what is actually happening underneath to get you to this optimized executable? And within the Cerebra software compiler, there are two supported execution modes for how we extract the static graph representation of your neural network from the framework and then map this graph to all 850,000 compute units on the CS2. And the first execution mode is called pipelined, and the second is what we call weight streaming. In the pipeline mode, what is happening is that we are mapping all of the weights of a neural network to the chip at the same time and streaming the activations through. In contrast, weight streaming is the exact opposite. And in the weight streaming mode, what we're doing is keeping the activations on the chip and then streaming in the weights one layer at a time so that we can accommodate extremely large sized neural networks. How you choose each one of these modes typically depends on the size of the model. And what our compiler will do is look at whether or not your entire neural network can fit within the on-chip memory and use that to determine whether pipeline or weight streaming is the proper execution mode. To give you a quick sense of what that looks like in this pipeline graphic, you can see here that up top we have a neural network and what we're showing is each one of these neural network layers being mapped to a different physical region on the wafer scale engine. Now what the compiler is doing is taking into account things like compute needs and memory needs for each of these individual layers so that more computationally expensive layers such as a convolution will automatically get allocated more space than a smaller layer, such as a loss function. Now, after this mapping is complete, a routing is configured through them to minimize the amount of communication that needs to happen as you walk through the neural network. And finally, you stream in the input on one end and you get the output out the other end. In weight streaming, again, you can think of it just as the opposite. Here, what's happening is that all of your model weights are stored externally off wafer and being streamed onto the chip one layer at a time to compute each layer. Once each layer's computation is complete, the gradients are streamed out of the wafer and the weight update actually occurs off the wafer as well. So you can see that in this model, what we are able to do is take model size and abstract it from this concept of model speed. If you want a larger model, you simply make sure that your memory X unit is provisioned with more memory. And if you want more speed, you can simply scale up to a larger number of CS2s, at which point, once again, you also do not need to do further partitioning of each individual large layer. So putting all of this together, what you no longer need to do compared to a large distributed cluster is figure out how to distribute your model across many small devices, you don't need to think about using distributed versions of TensorFlow or PyTorch or dealing with device memory size and memory bandwidth constraints, thinking about how to balance communication or synchronization overheads. You don't need to use special frameworks like Harvard or OpenMPI or deal with potential drops in your accuracy or performance when you have to use extremely large batch sizes and do all of the associated hyperparameter tuning needed to get your model to still converge to the desired accuracy. Because what we've done is pack the power of hundreds of compute units onto a single large chip, we are able to erase all of the problems of traditional distributed computing. And as a testament to this, one of our customers shared with us their own data, which is what you see here, of how we reduced their total time to solution from about four months on their typical GPU cluster to a little under four weeks when they switched over to the CS1. 
And that includes everything from actual training time to everything that happened before it, including software setup, the writing of the model, any additional iteration you have to do to get it to converge. All of this complexity is what we're able to remove for our users using the Cerebra CS2. So thank you very much for your time. If you're interested in trying the CS2 out, it's currently available through multiple channels, including as on-premise deployment via subscription model or available as a service through our partner Cirascale. Uh, feel free to reach out if you're interested in trying any of these models. And we look forward to hearing from you soon.